Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chad. I'm your tall tailor. I recently started bouldering the past couple months and it's a really great hobby. 10 out of 10 recommend bouldering. It's cool like physical activity as well too if that's something you're into. And I wanted to get a chalk bag because you know to hold the chalk for your hands and stuff like that. I'm not really a big liquid chalk kind of person. So instead of buying a chalk bag, you know, I sew, you know, might as well make one. Didn't seem too difficult to make and actually wasn't surprisingly. So I'm just going to show you guys that process right now and hopefully like if that's something you're into or even if you like go to the gym or whatever and like have like heavy lifts you know like a chalk bag so using like one of those ziplock bags <laughs> you can actually make a chalk bag yeah it'll be kind of cool to make now disclaimer i did like little to no research when making this chalk bag so i literally just i took my friend's chalk bag i looked at it and i'm like hmm kind of like trying to decipher it in my mind and i like felt the materials I'm like oh okay i could probably make that and i went to the fabric store and I bought the materials that I thought would, you know, consist of making a chalk bag. So in future, if I do end up making something different or something new, maybe I'll like update this video, put like a card up here, with like an update or something like that so you guys can see. Anyway, that's enough yapping, uh, let's get this on. Let's go over some of the materials. First up, we have the material for the inside of the chalk bag, which is this navy blue felt material. Second, we have the material for the exterior of the chalk bag. And this is like a nylon blend uh, material. I wanted something that's gonna be pretty light as well as durable because I'm going to be probably tossing this around a lot. It's going to be on the floor in my bag and all that kind of stuff. So I want something nice and durable. Thirdly, we have this high vis orange, which I'm going to be using for some of the straps and accessory holders of the chalk bag. And I also got this string, which is going to be used as a closer mechanism of the chalk bag. This is like a cotton string. In future, I'm going to get something a little bit more substantial, maybe a nylon string. So it'll be a little bit more, a little bit more durable. I also got these metal thread stoppers, which are going to be used to adjust the closure. So when I close the bag, it can stay closed. And lastly, I have these two things. Uh, one is some high vis fabric, some like that 3M reflective. This is not necessary. I just use it because I don't know, I want to add a little bit more uh, character to the bag. And I also got a metal navy blue zipper here as well too. It's just going to be using for like an accessory pocket that I'm going to put on the chalk bag. Before we get started, I always like to draw out what I'm going to sew so I get a better idea of what I'm doing and you guys get to see exactly where my mind's at. I'm just drawing a general shape of what a chalk bag is going to look like, an exterior fabric that's going to be the shell of the bag as well as an interior fabric that's going to be like where the chalk actually sits and this is going to be made out of that uh, that navy blue felt material. Once I have that down, I ended up going with a little bit of a different design. I'll show you guys that a little bit later. What I ended up coming up with was taking the bag and separating it into four sections. And each section, I'm gonna make this kind of like trapezoidal house shape. And I'm gonna be stitching all four of those together. And that'll make sort of like a bag that's circular on the top as well as square at the bottom so that it sits a little bit better and the circular on the top is going to be better for me to like put my hands inside. So it'll be like a kind of like the best of both worlds when it comes into shape. Again, this is just literally making this up out of the blue. I hope it works. Well, it does end up working because that's why I'm making a video. But I do end up liking this design. I did have a couple of other designs I wanted to do, but this ended up being the best one that I came up with. We have our shape down. We have our measurements down. Now I'm just going to be translating that onto our nylon here our trapezoidal kind of like upside down house shape. This is pretty much, I'm just using like a variety of rulers to get that shape. And when I have that down, I'm gonna be cutting it out. I'm just gonna be cutting out four of each. So four with the nylon fabric and four with the felt fabric. We have all eight of our panels cut out. That's gonna be four in the nylon material and four in the felt material. I'm just gonna be setting most of these aside for now. And I'm just gonna be focusing on one of these panels. And this is what I'm gonna be using to make our pocket pretty much. Now using some of that high vis fabric as well as a zipper, I'm just gonna be making a pocket. I'm kind of like, honestly, I'm kind of winging it in this situation, I'm using some excess fabric to make a exterior pocket just to put some extra stuff like, I don't know, like earphones or some, I don't know, extra chalk or like a phone or something like that. So that doesn't get, you know, it doesn't get all messy and stuff with the chalk. As I said before, the pocket is optional and it did take me a little bit of trial and error just to figure out exactly where I wanted to put the pocket. I wasn't sure what the size I wanted it to be or the placement on the bag. So I just took one panel and then made sort of like a small pocket that can put a little bit of like miscellaneous extra stuff in. You can see me here just working using the nylon as well as the high vis fabric and figuring out the exact sort of place that's going to be best to actually put this pocket. 
we are back from the sewing machine and let's just take a look at what that pocket looks like you can see it's half and half half of that nylon half of that high vis and you can even notice i kind of folded up the bottom nylon piece to kind of cover the zipper just so that you know it's like a metal zipper i don't want it to be scratching on like my hands or anything like that so i did a little piece of extra fabric just to cover that totally optional you don't even have to do this but with the zipper pocket done next thing we're going to be doing is stitching up the rest of the shell the outer shell of the bag first thing we're going to be doing is putting two pieces two of those panels together and making two stitches one's going to be on the long side of the panel and the other one is going to be on the short side and we're going to be doing that for two pairs of panels pretty much and then we when we do that we're going to be taking it to the sewing machine and we're going to come back and i'll show you guys the next step we're back from the sewing machine and we have two pairs of the panels two pairs of panels wow that's kind of it's like a tongue twister anyway we have two pairs of panels stitched together and if you take a closer look you can see i even reinforced where the zipper and the panels meet this is just to make the bag a little bit stronger so that the longevity of the bag you know it lasts a little bit longer this is what both panels look like and one thing i'm going to do just to make it a little bit easier to go on to the next part is open up that seam and grab my iron and then just press the seam open it's just going to make it a little bit easier to just to sew for the next steps and our next step is going to be pretty much stitching two of these panels together so we're going to make one big sort of <laughs> bag shape and i'm just going to be taking that to the sewing machine and we'll move on to our next step we are back from the sewing machine and let's take a look at the bag and what we actually stitched up here you can see it looks pretty nice all the stitches are looking pretty pretty good and just a close up on some of the stitches here make sure to put your stitch length a little bit smaller so you have nice and tight stitches so that everything's nice and strong i'm just going to be flipping the bag inside out so we can take a look at the exterior how it's actually going to be looking when we finish it uh, and here you can see the pocket and i also added added a tiny piece of folded elastic on the side right by the zipper you can see that there that's just going to be for in future you know if i have like a brush or anything like that i can kind of just like stick that in the elastic part totally not necessary but i just added there just to make it look just kind of give me that like future proofing with that done again making sure that the zipper works and everything's good we're pretty much going to be repeating this exact same process but with the felt so i'm going to be pretty much doing that, bringing it to the sewing machine, and I'll be right back. And we're gonna be moving on to a little bit of a simpler step. We're just gonna be adding some of that webbing just to make two straps on one of the panels of the chalk bag. This is just so that we have something, you know, in case we wanna add it to our belt or add like a strap on the chalk bag so we have more options when it comes to sort of like how we use the bag. So I'm just gonna be cutting two medium-sized straps from our neon, I was going to say neon green from our high vis orange webbing. And I'm just finding a good place to put that on the bag and then pretty much stitching it onto the bag. And after that, we can move on to our next step. So here we have our four felt pieces and we're going to be stitching these together again, exactly the same. Things going to change exactly the same as how we stitch the nylon pieces together. We'll be taking it to the sewing machine. And when we come back this again, this is what it should look like. You see the stitches on the outside as well as the sort of like clean seams on the inside and i'm just going to be test fitting these two bags together we pretty much made two bags i'm going to be test fitting them by putting the felt bag inside the nylon bag and you can kind of see it's like it, it's coming together it's it's starting to look like a chalk bag um, but we have one crucial step to add that might be a little bit tricky but, but we're going to be working on that okay so now we have our shell complete as well as the felt interior material complete now we're going to be moving on to pretty much the the most complicated part of making this chalk bag attaching the string closure again this is my first time doing this so i'm going to try and be as as concise and go as slowly as i can so i don't confuse you guys because even when i was doing this it was a bit confusing for me i had to do like I have to stop, I have to think a bunch. So I'm gonna to try to not do that when it comes to explaining it to you. Okay, so our first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're going to be putting the interior of the bag, so the felt lining, as well as the shell of the bag with the right sides facing each other. So it's gonna look like the nylon bag is inside the felt bag and you're gonna be seeing all the seam allowance and all the seams on the outside. So kind of like this. When we have that done, we're gonna be finding a place to have the entry or I guess the exit of the string and it's going to be a tiny small hole on the shell the nylon shell of the bag um, it's best to do this on a seam so I just found like a seam on one of the panels and it's about a quarter way from the edge from the top of the edge and I'm just going to be poking a little tiny hole in there with my seam ripper this is actually perfect 
a perfect um, use of the seam ripper. You can use the sort of picking end of the seam ripper to take up one of those seams and then sort of cut the seam. You can bring this back to the sewing machine again just to reinforce the seams that you cut. Or alternatively, if you don't want to do this, you can add sort of like a grommet to make like a hole there. But I think using the seam is just a little bit better and a little bit easier. Once we have that done, we're going to be wrapping the string around the bag. And once it's wrapped around the bag, we're going to try and fish the string through that small hole that we made. If it helps, you can get some tweezers or I guess pretty much just, twe <laughs> just tweezers to try and help you because it's a pretty small hole and it might be a little bit more difficult to wrap and fit both ends of the string um, inside the like hole that you made. But once that's done, you can pull it out and now you can kind of see what it's going to look like with the string wrapped around the wrapped around the bag. So with everything wrapped around and the string fed through that hole, it should look something like this. And now we're just going to be setting this aside and moving on to our next step. So we're going to be stitching the ends of this bag together all the way around. And we're going to be leaving about, I'd say half a panels worth of space, give or take to that we're not going to stitch because we're going to be using that to flip the bag inside out. But before we take it to the sewing machine, our important step that we have to do is we're going to have to be adding a couple of flaps. I'd say three of these flaps and we're going to be adding it around the string and stitching it to the top, the edge of the bag. This is just so that when we pull the string, the string doesn't accidentally, you know, fall down. It just makes everything stay in place so that we have a nice consistent uh, closure when we end up pulling the string. Anyway, hope that made sense. I'm just going to be taking the, it to the sewing machine and we'll be right back. We have returned from the sewing machine once again and this is what the bag's looking like. There you can see that little loop of fabric I left just to catch the string so that it doesn't fall down. And I also left a tiny hole that's going to help us flip the bag inside out. I think I made it a little bit too small so I ended up using my razor blade just to cut a little bit, a whole bit bigger. So pretty much I'm just going to be flipping the bag inside out and make sure you take your time with this as not to rip or pull anything. And this is going to take a little bit of time. Just make sure that you go slowly and that, and that you don't rip or like tear any fabric. Our last two things that we're going to have to do. Number one, take our sewing machine and stitch up that tiny hole. Just top stitch the edge of the hole so that you know you don't have like an open like hole in your chalk bag. And then we're also going to be stitching at about a half an inch around the entire circumference of the opening of the bag just so that the felt and the nylon don't move or shift around or anything like that. So take it to the sewing machine and then we'll be right back. We have returned from the sewing machine. We're back. The very last step that we have to do before we finish up this chalk bag. Again, this is what it's looking like so far. You can even test pull the strings so you can see how the closure is going to look like and how it closes looks pretty good. The last thing we have to add is that metal thread stopper so that when we pull the bag, we can sort of cinch it closed and that it won't open. It did end up taking me, not gonna lie, like <laughs> it ended up taking me kind of long to fit the metal closure and the strings together. I end up using tweezers and stuff. But when I have that down, I'm just gonna knot both ends of the thread and that's it. We are pretty much done and this is what the bag is gonna be looking like. And we are done. Man, this ended up turning out a lot better than I initially anticipated because as I said, I did like little to no research on making the chalk bag. I chose felt as the interior material because that's kind of what it felt like. <laughs> it felt like, <laughs> that's kind of like what it felt like holding on to like a real bag. Pros and cons of this bag, like in retrospect, looking back at it now, it is pretty big. It's also like really, really deep as well too. Ideally, I'd want to make a bag that's a little bit like a little bit smaller, but it's not this large, but the closure works really well. It's a little closure on the side, works really well. You can open the bag up all the way. Some chalk, damn. Open up the bag all the way. It holds a pretty large amount of chalk, which, which is pretty good. I don't even think I need that much chalk, but it holds a pretty decent amount of chalk. Next time, if I make another one of these, I'm probably going to be, maybe I'll make it into like some sort of like plush or I don't know, something a little bit more interesting, visually interesting than just like a black bag with a little bit of like reflective tape on it. Oh, I also added this pocket here um, to hold like miscellaneous, like miscellaneous like stuff. I put my phone in here a couple times. I only used this bag twice so far and yeah, it held up pretty well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else I 
want to talk about this bag. It's a pretty simple bag. Let me know if you guys end up trying this or if this tutorial helps. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah, like and comment and all that, all that YouTube stuff. I'll see you next video. Okay, bye.